In this video, we discuss priority queues. In another video, we will discuss how to use a priority queue to construct a Huffman tree. We first discuss priority queues. We know that an ordinary queue is first in first out, FIFO, or first come first served. In other words, the last element that enters the queue will be the last one to be served, that is, deleted, as shown in these diagrams. In a priority queue, each element in the queue is assigned a priority. The element with the highest priority is moved to the front and is out first as shown in this diagram. For example, we can put tasks in a priority queue, assigning higher priorities to more important tasks, Critical tasks could be moved to the front and be served first, like the situations in a hospital. In this diagram, rectangular blocks represent queue elements and the circle represents a server. New arrival with the highest priority could be moved to the front. A priority queue is usually implemented using an array, often referred to as a heap, and organized in a tree structure. We can formally define a priority queue as follows, a priority queue is a complete binary tree satisfying the heap condition. A complete binary tree means, 1. All internal nodes except possibly the lowest ones have two children. 2. Nodes on a level are all as far to the left as possible. The heap condition means, the key value of each node is less than, or equal to the values of its children. The tree is referred to as a min tree. One can similarly construct a max tree by requiring a node's key value to be larger than its children. In this diagram, A is a priority queue as it is a complete binary tree satisfying the heap condition. B is not because it is not a complete binary tree, as node 8 only has one child and it is not at the lowest level. C is not because the heap condition is violated as 5, parent, is larger than 3, child. You can see in diagram A, that the tree is partially ordered as there is no relation between the left and right children. The tree, priority queue, can be represented using an array, often referred to as a heap. In this example, the array looks like this. We start from location 1, not using location 0. So this is location 1. 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Note that the root is at the front. It has the highest priority, or minimum key value here. With this representation, a node can easily find its parent and children. The parent of the node at location i is given by the floor function of i over 2. Taking the floor function of a value x is to truncate x to the nearest integer, for example, for key 99 at location 10, its parent is at floor, 10 over 2, equal to 5, with key value 20. For key 11 at location 7, its parent is at floor, 7 over 2, equal to floor, 3.5, equal to 3, with key value 8. The children of location i are at 2 times i, and 2 times i plus 1. For example, children of key 3, location 2, are, key 5, location 4, and key 20, location 5. When we insert an element, we insert it at the rear, or tail, corresponding to the leftmost available position of the binary tree. After insertion, the heap condition might be violated, and we need to swap the newly inserted node with its parent. The swapping continues until the heap condition is retained. For example, we insert 2 at the end of the queue, location 11. The parent of location 11 is at floor, 11 over 2, equals 5. Since the key at location 5 is 20, which is larger than key 2. We swap 20 and 2. Now key 2 is at location 5, and its parent is at location 2, whose key value is 3, which is larger than key 2, so we swap them. 
Now key 2 is at location 2, its parent is at location 1 with key value 1, which is smaller than key 2. So we terminate the swapping process, and the heap condition is retained. This is our final binary tree after inserting key 2. For deletion, we delete, or pop, at the front, or head, which is the root, that possesses the minimum key. We simply replace the root with the tail element, the rightmost element at the lowest level of the binary tree. If necessary, we swap the node with its smaller child to retain the heap condition. Here, 99 is compared with children 3 and 8. It swaps with 3 as it is smaller than 8. Then it compares with 5 and 20, and swaps with 5. Finally, it compares with 9 and 5 and swaps with 5. This is the final tree after deletion. You can see that the queue always has the smallest element at the root, or the front. As a result, we can use a priority queue to sort a list. We insert the elements into the queue, and keep popping it. Then we get a sorted list, as the smallest element is always moved to the front, root, and popped first. This method of sorting is referred to as heap sort. A priority queue can be conveniently applied to construct a Huffman tree that we will discuss in another video. Next, we will discuss its implementation. pq.h is the header file for implementing a priority queue class. The default size of the queue is set at 600. We first define a record class that has a key and a data field named x. We use the template here so that the class can work with various key types and data types. It has simple constructors as shown. Our priority queue is to hold record objects. We name our priority queue class pq. It has a few member functions. The functions is empty and is full are self-explained and are easy to implement. We will discuss the implementations of insert and pop. The private data member heap is the array we have discussed. Here, pq.cpp is the actual file that implements the functions. In the default constructor, we set the maximum size to the default size, which is 600 and start with a queue size equal to 0. We create a heap of record objects with size equal to maximum size plus 1. This is because heap 0 is not used as you have seen in these diagrams. Here's the insert function. We start by inserting the record object at the end of the array. If it is not at the root, which is at location 1, we compare the key of the new record with its parent's key. If they A in order, we terminate the process. Otherwise we have to swap it with the parent and move to the parent's location. And repeat the process as discussed. Here's the pop or delete function. Heap 1 is the root, or the front. We save the record in min which will be returned value. The root, heap 1 is then replaced by the last element heap size. Now variable i index is the location of that element. Variable j points to the smaller child of i. Normally, 2 times i plus 1 points to the right child. If 2 times i plus 1 is larger than size, there's no right child, so j equals 2 times i. Otherwise, we compare the two children, and j points to the smaller one. We then compare record i with record j, if they are in order, we are done. Otherwise we swap record i with record j and continue the process. Note that for a full binary tree if we assume the root is at level 0, and the tree depth is d, the number of nodes at level d minus 1, second lowest level, is 2d minus 2 and the number of nodes up to level d minus 1 is 1 plus 2 to the 1 plus plus 2 to the d minus 2 equal to 2 to the d minus 1 minus 1 while the tree size is equal to 2 to the d minus 1 
So if the node location i is larger than 2 to the d minus 1, minus 1 or size over 2, we know that the node is at the lowest level. Let's compile this program to check if there's any error. So there's no error. Let us consider a simple example of using the priority queue to sort records. In the example, a record contains the scores and names of the students. The scores are the keys and the names are data. We use a random number generator to generate 20 scores which are between 0 and 100. We create a priority queue named PQ. We insert the records into the priority queue and print out the original list of records. Then we pop the priority queue until it is empty. We obtain a list of sorted records. Let's compile this program and run it. Now let's execute this program. Uh, you can see that this is the original list. Uh, the scores are the keys. They are pretty random. Okay. And then this is the sorted list. And they are arranged in order 15, 21, 26, 26, 27, and so on. So the list is sorted. Okay. This is called heap sort. Uh, in another video, we will discuss how to use a particle to construct a Huffman tree. Actually, there are many applications of a particle, and you can try that yourself. Okay. Thank you for watching. Okay. Bye.